It's the month of Halloween, and today we're doing something a little differently, guys. Today I'm going to be talking about some spooky games Nintendo actually came out with. So, for the longest time I was wondering what kind of spooky games actually came out on a Nintendo console. And we're not talking about Eternal Darkness, we're talking about old games. We're talking about Super Nintendo, Nintendo, Game Boy, I don't even think there was any Game Boy ones. Maybe there were, I don't know yet. But we're talking about the first one I found today. We're talking about Clock Tower for the Super Famicom. Developed by Human Entertainment and originally released for the Super Famicom in 1995, it was the first installment in the series. The story follows the orphan Jennifer Simpson, who was adopted by the Barrows family, along with a bunch of other orphan girls. Jen finds one of the other children murdered by the game's antagonist, Scissor Man. And uh, Jennifer begins to explore the rest of the mansion to find a way to escape while evading the evil Scissor Man out to destroy her and all that leaves in the world of the mansion or something. The cool thing about the game, though, it has multiple endings, so you can die many, many times over. But that is another problem with the game. The game, you can die, and that's it. The game will just, you yeah, have to restart the game. Now, gameplay-wise, it's pretty much a point-and-click adventure. You walk around the mansion, and I mean walk. It is slow walking. You go around the mansion, look for items, look for jump scares, look for try to avoid Scissor Man, and all that goodness. The one good thing about this game, though, is I figured out late halfway through recording, is that I can actually hit... L and R to run around, which makes traversing the, the game much easier. Now, the game does have a few jump scares in it. I will say that the atmosphere in this game is very good. It is spooky. It is, you are isolated, and they do have a few good jump scares in there that, do, that did scare me once or twice. So, I gotta give the game credit that, that it was indeed scary. Other than that, I never beat the game, because apparently the way to do this game is that you, there is a set, sort of a set path, but there is multiple endings to the game. But to get to the final ending, you have to go through a lot of hoops to just find the right way to do this. Now, one important fact is that you cannot fight Scissor Man. The first rule of Fight Club, do not fight Scissor Man. Jen cannot fight Scissor Man at any point in time. All you have to do is run. You have to run and hide. So if you encounter Scissor Man, just turn the other way and run. That's all you can do in this game. Which is which is rather hard sometimes, especially when you get knocked into a corner. Now the game did get a re-release on the PlayStation Windows um, later on and was retitled uh, Clock Tower The First Fear. And um, featured a new we dagger weapon, new room, and minor scenario editions. The PlayStation and Windows versions also feature full motion video scenes and minor graphical improvements. As far as horror games goes, this is a win for me. This is a great way to go nostalgic in the old roots of the old Nintendo systems. And it's very surprising because there was never really that many horror games on the Nintendo systems. The game was a solid player, a little slow at times, but it had plenty of jump scares, and that's all that matters uh, in a scary game. When you're looking for something to jump you, it's scary, and whew, you've got uh, you got Clock Tower. And that's Clock Tower for you guys. If you like this video, leave a like, comment, subscribe. And we're going to be taking a look at some other scary Nintendo games from uh, the years long past. So we'll see what we can find out in the next episode, guys. So until then, have a good Halloween. <laughs> yeah, that's not scary.